Oh wow, this place looks amazing in HD. Ruins of Kamdazal, I think, is a really underappreciated area. It's recently built, but it's a really cool little dungeon. It's got lots of like self-contained mini games in it as well. Um, you could theoretically do the prayer and fishing section over here, um, but we're going to be doing the mining section section um, and just try and get the uh, artifacts. A good way to think of this mining area is like a free-to-play motherload mine. You can kind of AFK here for a bit, which is quite nice. Ooh, there you go. Um, and it'll just kind of collect resources as you go and then occasionally it'll deplete and you kind of run to the next one. So we finally got a full inventory of Baronite deposits. Um, so we pick up some Baronite shards and then occasionally get Baronite deposits. And what you can do is you can, uh, you can smith Baronite deposits on here, on the smithing anvil. And either you get some shards or you get the opportunity to get some other rarer things. So like the artifacts we're looking for or the Incando hammer unbroken. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking for at the moment. We're gonna we're gonna keep doing this until we get all five of the artifacts, then we can give them to the museum. What we can use this for, we can either fix the hammer that we get, uh, hopefully, because that'd be really nice. The Camden hammer you can hold, so it saves an inventory spot, and you can also store it in the their own house. A really really good item to get for um, Ultimate Iron Man. Or you can use 750 to go in here and run the gauntlet, and you can get some really cool little supplies from there. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. Oh, and some smithing XP. Didn't even realise that. That's great news. <laughs> Just as I close off the clip, we get a Baronite head. So that's uh, that's for one of the items you can get. Say so it's a mace um, and thirty smithing. Uh, but you have to go around all the uh, different parts and get the mace, and it's it's equivalent to a rune mace. So we're probably not going to do that. If you use the Baronite head or any of the bits that you don't want um, on the Camdo Dwarf Romano, Romano in here, you can convert it to um, Baronite shards. So. 100, that's pretty fine, I don't need it anyway, so that's good. Just going through the second inventory. You can see we're picking up some um, gems here, so I might have to think about getting my crafting level up soonish. There are a couple of quests I still need to do to do that. Oh, there we go. We've got an ancient astroscope, so this is one of the ancient artifacts. That's one of five done. Right, that's the second inventory full. So, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go complete a couple of quests to give me some crafting XP. So let's go do Murder Mystery and then Dwarf Cannon. Then hopefully we'll be able to cut some of these gems. That's Murder Mystery done with a weird amount of crafting XP but that should get me a pretty decent level. Yeah, 15 crafting, not too bad. Uh, aiming for 20 crafting here. So now to do the Dwarf Cannon for hopefully 20 crafting. And that's the other crafting quest completed, so hopefully that gets us somewhere closer to 20. Okay, 17, I'll take it. We only need to get three more levels before we can start cutting sapphires, so what we'll do is we'll spin some flax until we're 20 and that shouldn't take too long. So to get the last crafting levels, what we're going to be doing is picking a full inventory of flax, and then come all the way down to the south of Falador to make them into bowstrings on the spinning wheel. Not bad XP. A bit of a grind. And with that, I think we reach our goal of 20. So yeah, now we can cut the sapphires, which is exactly what we want. So let's just finish up these three. And then we'll cut these sapphires. Um, what's really important about these is actually we're at the right magic level as well to um, enchant the sapphires if we need to. Um, so I remember I got rid of those uh, cosmic runes, but they're not the hardest to get back, so in the world. Um, but that does mean that we, when we start our um, Wintertop grind, we will have um, games like this. So that's really, really good news. Back to mining. If you talk to Romano, you can actually go to something called the Exchange, which is really good. And for 2,500, which is bizarrely actually exactly what I landed on, you can get a mining boost. Where you get a permanent buff to increase your chance of mining Baronite 10%, which is amazing. So what we're going to do is activate that, spend all our coins on that. And, um, and now we should get a higher XP uh, per hour. So currently we're capping out around 5,100 XP per hour in mining. So it should increase from there. You can see whilst mining, we have de definitely got an increase in the XP per hour. It did cap out around 6,100 actually, but it probably is this is about the average. Um, but in three levels, I'll be able to upgrade my pickaxe to an adamant pickaxe, and then that should go higher as well, I think. But yeah, I mean, it fluctuates around this level. It's pretty good, honestly. Uh, pretty good buff. Nice, okay, we got the 18 treaties. Okay, nice, so that's in second. Brilliant. By the way, of course I get 20 crafting and I don't get a single other gem from mining. 
If I had that 31 mining, um, I can use Adam Addy pickaxes, and I think that would actually speed up my mining XP an hour. It's not actually that expensive, it's like 3k or something, so I'm just gonna go grab it now. And it will only take me two minutes. With the Addy pickups upgrade, I've basically tripled my XP per hour, which is pretty crazy. So this grind might be a bit faster. But I've got 3,000 beans at the moment, and one of the options is to get a 5% permanent buff your chances to find a rare item in cam Dazelle. and that could be getting the rare items from when you're hammering these so it is probably worth it doing that so I can get the artifact and the hammer but I wonder if it also means when you're opening these chests you get a better chance of getting rare items from those chests so I may as well do it um, it only costs 3,000 smackaroos um, and hopefully I'll still have enough um, Baronite Shards by the end of this grind that I can do some Gauntlet Runs. Woo! Good luck to me! So we've got five but two duplicates so I'm going to go and see if I can hand these in. Um, I imagine I would have to find the other two which I think is the Globe and Arsenet. Um, but I'll give it a go. So we are at Kudos28 is the quiz. That's use these on uh, okay so we only got three so we need to find another two. Oh, we got the uh, we got the encanto hammer okay this is fucking great this is really really good what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna fix this now i think i have enough shards to fix it <laughs> it's a strange fruit it's not actually a thing um so let's see if i can use this hammer on him this is really really good no, 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 repair the hammer. How much does it cost? 3,000... Oh, it only costs like 150. Yeah, perfect. So, so this is a wieldable hammer that you can actually store in the house. It literally could not be better for me. Um, so let's keep that on me. And it's going to be really good for the, um, the Winterstock grind. Oh, we got the Ancient Glow. Okay, brilliant. One more piece. Didn't think I'd get this level doing this grind, but that's 41 mining, uh, which means I can use a rune pickaxe. So we've gone just from doing this, which actually hasn't been too bad, to be honest. It's uh, been a, a few hours, a good few hours, but uh, we've gone from 14 or 15 or whatever it was to 41 mining. Nice free-to-play motherload mine there. Right, so our inventory is filling up again, so let's go complete this clue, clear all our inventory, and then we're going to try and get the last uh, relic, which is the necklace. Right, that means only one left. Right, so we've cleared up the inventory and we've got our um, casket, so let's just see what's in it, and then we can sell what we don't need. Aha! There we go. And that's the final relic. That took a lot longer than I was anticipating, so we're gonna still we're gonna get rid of this the rest of this inventory. But we got 44 mining and 38 smithing just from this grind, so that's nearly 10 smithing levels and nearly 30 mining levels a bit crazy um let's go hand this in well there you go 10 smithing levels yeah it's taken a bit longer than i anticipated but it's not really the end of the world and uh, what we've got is like 15 tries at the, at the, at the vault pretty great now we've got all the kudos from that and some additional coinage so what we can do is we can keep that on us and then let's go and use all these baronite shards. Going dry on something like Ruins of Kazmodel sounds pretty annoying, but actually it's really not too bad. Um, because smithing is actually quite a difficult thing to train for an ultimate Iron Man, so getting down nine smithing is actually pretty alright. We're going to store 11,000 in here, which is going to be enough for 14 runs of the gauntlet. So it costs 750 to get into the vault and essentially the further back you get the better chest rewards you can get and you've got a minute to go in um, and do what you can um, but you've got to get out by the end of the minute um, so we can try and get like spend like 20 seconds getting to the end rooting around 20 seconds getting back and that should be enough time so let's give it a go
So I think we're going to just try and stack them up. Right, we're running out of inventory space, so let's open all our small ones, shall we? You can get some pretty good items in here. The stuff that we're looking for is actually like noted planks and noted items. You can get some money as well. I don't know if it comes up anywhere. It doesn't show on room light when you open these things. So let's have a look. Right, what we're going to do is because we're running out of space in this. Oh, heavy. 20. How much do I weigh? 195 kilograms. Right, we're going to open a couple of these ornate lock boxes. Hopefully we can uh, do something with this type of stuff in the inventory. Nature runes. Okay. Coins. Like it, like it. More nature runes. Oh, shit, that's great. More coins. Bigging up the cash stack here. More coins, not bad. Law rooms, interesting. Coins, rain. Law rooms, nuts. A sapphire. Okay, we can chop that up. Nearly get a little. Right, so that's pretty great. We've got um, enough for like maybe five more. So let's see if we can get some more big, big chests. Right, we got our final load from the run, so let's open them in size order. The block box. Might be able to do something with the software. But I can't even think of what I could do with it, really. Open this one. Emeralds. Law runes. I'm getting lots of law runes and nature runes. And some sapphires. And with this, actually, we should be able to get a couple of, far oh, a couple of cra farming crafting levels. Okay, you yeah. know, one crafting level, I'll take it. Right, so it's set up pretty well. Um, we've got some bits and bobs in our in our inventory, so let's go and use this um, to clear up our inventory again. Right, so I've processed or sold everything that was in my inventory uh, from the Baronite Shards um, vault, and it didn't even get me a fletching level. Yeah, it wasn't very, very close, but it didn't get me a fletching level. So rather than doing fishing contests, what we're going to do is sea slug first. So that means I don't have to fish up to level 10. So to do that, you really should do monk's friend because then you don't have to do the fire making. And... Yep. So now we've got some wood cutting XP. We need to, now need to get 30 fire making. We're almost level 15 wood cutting. So we can almost start with um, uh, oak logs because we got that 15 fire making really, really early on. So let's get 15 wood cutting. 15 fire, uh, 30 fire making and then do sea slug and that's 30 fire making we can now do the sea slug quest and that's the sea slug quest done we got a quite a lot of uh, fishing xp so hopefully that's taking us from one or two fishing to, yeah 24 fishing now we've got well enough uh, fishing xp to go do the fishing contest and that's the fishing contest done so that's another large amount of very weird and specific amount of fishing xp but that should get me to come on lad 26 fishing not too bad without really fishing anything and we can also use the uh, tunnel under white wolf mountain which is great and then we completed plague city with some pretty decent mining xp but we don't really need that at this point hey 45 mining there not bad this is another enemy we got the um poison dagger for so hopefully we're gonna stab this guy up and then he'll be poisoned we don't even care about it getting above one it's just like it's very satisfying them all being one you gotta you gotta admit being a pure is pretty cool oh he he is now poisoned, we just have to run away from him until he is, is away from us. Okay, so now we just have to wait until he dies, dies of poison. Oh, what am I doing? Yes, got it. Okay, so the poison did help, but it seemed like he just wouldn't die from poison, so good. And that's biohazard done, um, so now we've got access to West Ardy, which means we can sell cats, we've got access to that shop some demon xp and also we can start like temple of icon and other stuff and that's his eel cult quest done uh so some thieving xp oh some uh, so... oh no someone's chose, chosen that route I, I chose this route because it uh didn't require me killing anybody and then we completed tower of life for some good construction xp and 
Yep, yeah, 22 construction. Nice. Oh, that was crafting. Okay. Cool. And then we picked up some Boots of Lightness. So we just finished the Observatory quest, and unfortunately we were Sagittarius, so we do get crafting XP, but I think we also get... Yeah, we, we get something depending on what we uh, are, so I think that could possibly be... I mean, have we got the longbow? Do we not get any ranging XP? Oh, fantastic. That's great news. Okay, cool. So it's just the longbow. Brilliant. Jungle potion completed. And that's the dig site quest done. Um, so we get some really good XP from this. So, you know, mining and herb lore. The really important part of this is it's the prerequisite for Bone Voyage, allowing us to get to Fossil Island. So we've just gone to the guy upstairs in the museum um, and we've collected the kudos from the quest that we've done. Um, we also got this XP lamp, which we're going to be putting into herb lore. So now we're at 53 kudos. What we're going to be doing next is cleaning finds downstairs. That way we can get more kudos and hopefully find the dig site pendant. And with this final artifact, we should reach over 100 kudos, which is the requirement for Bone Voyage, which is what this entire episode has been kind of gearing towards. So really, really good here. Finally found the dig site pendant. Um, it was actually the last thing we found, which is great. So uh, just going to hand this in. And now we can make dig site pendants. Right, I miss recording the clips. I'm an idiot. We just handed in the, all the required parts for the first section of Recipe for Disaster. Um, so that means we should have... After this cutscene... Oh god! Oh lord, why is this happening? What on earth is happening? Oh, what happens if I walk? Oh, I kind of don't want to walk. But, like, fix it. Oh, it doesn't! <laughs> Look at the horror from the deep. What's <laughs> the crafty and horror? Oh, please be, please be me, my permanent model. Look at this. I'm like boxing. This is amazing. <laughs> That's a walk. Oh, this is incredible. I don't know how I've done this, but this is the best thing that's ever happened in RuneScape. What a skin! <laughs> oh, I'm still like this! Look at this! Amazing! Okay, I, I don't want to log out. Oh, what do we look like in HD? This is amazing. Oh man, this is excellent. Okay, let's see if we can fix it. <laughs> oh, okay. Rip Cthulhu, man. We are on our final stretch of quests, and one of those quests requires 30 farming, so that's uh, enlightened journey. So, what we're going to be doing is making super compost and maybe planting a few juke seeds. Hopefully, that'll work. Um, and then we also need to get 36 crafting. Um, but to do Enlightened Journey, you have to go on to Entrana. Um, and obviously we've got the axe we can kind of get rid of, but I don't want to really get rid of the Iron Dagger. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, the Iron Dagger for the quest that we need to use it for. So that would be Priest and Peril, Peril to kill that guard dog thing. Um, so those are kind of the quests we're looking at now. Um, so it's Bone Voyage, Priest and Peril, Enlightened Journey. And I think we're basically done. Which is great. Alright, bad run on the maze. What'll be it? Not bad though. Not bad at all. We might sell those rooms. Right, so we're doing Priest in Peril. This is an instance area. Obviously, we're in Ultimate Iron Man. This is kind of a difficult one. Um, level 30 guard, but we've got the poison dagger, so hopefully we can kill it with the poison. I know you can just kind of say spot it here, bizarrely, so you have to kind of wait until it's on this side. Hey, nice. Got it. 
Okay, we have to kill a second thing, which is the Monk of Zamorak, a level 30. The issue with it is it's got this weird regen, so rather than regening one health a minute, it regens like three health every 15 seconds or something ridiculous. So you can't kill it with just poison. So we've got this plan with our main, which Swampletics showed in his first video, to Venom the Monk. So what we did is we um, brewed down with my main to uh, one ranged, then we hit him with the blowpipe, um, which venoms them, and then we let them heal up to full health, and then we hit them with my RD ultimate, and that should get the kill over to me even though it's venom for him. Should. There we go, uh, and we venomed him. Um, that is fantastic. That's really, really good. I'm so happy with that. Okay, brilliant. Now we can continue with the quest. That was really hard, actually. That was really, really fucking hard. And that's finally Priest and Peril completed after two deaths and about two and a half hours of trying to venom the thing. Um, but now we have access to Mauritania, which is great news for us. So the main reason we did Priest and Peril, even though it took us a really long period of time and, you know, didn't seem necessarily worth it is because if we need to get our crafting up which we do for enlightened journey which is a quest that we need to get before we start our winter grind then we need to be able to get a crafting up and port phasmatis is the best place to do that um because you can go between the charter ship and the furnace and blow uh blow glass so it's a really really good way of doing that and it's really cheap and we don't have loads of money at the moment so that's exactly why we're doing it before the crafting grind, we're going to try and get our farming up. Whilst getting some seeds so we can get my farming levels up, I've got 42 farming. So just doing some farming. Did you know that the leprechaun at the cabbage patch doesn't let you note cabbages here because he says there are too many cabbages here to get somebody else to exchange it? How hilarious. So we finally got our first fishing evil barb event, which is great. Uh, so that's some really good fishing XP. And we get to 27 fishing, so close to that uh, temporal grind. And with this... We do something that I've been putting off for a really long period of time. Uh, we finally complete the RD Diary. So I've actually been avoiding doing this for a while because as an Ultimate Iron Man, I can't store any, any of my stuff. And I want to put the lamp um, into Herb Lore, but you need 30 Herb Lore to do that. Um, and you can't destroy it and claim it back, so I need to keep it on me now. Um, but I need to teleport around to get the farming level up. So just getting the article so, so I can do that teleport and make my life a bit easier. But I will have to hold on to that lamp for a while. And with that, we have finally hit 30 farming. So that's our farming goal for this uh, quest. Um, so now we're going to start on crafting. And that was a bit of a miserable grind, I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, so to get our crafting up from a starting point, I think it was 26 to 36 up 10 levels. We came to Port Phasmatis, which is one of the reasons we did Priest in Peril. Um, there are several other reasons, obviously, as well. But Port Phasmatis has a really close charter ship to a furnace. What you do is you buy soda ash and the, um, the sand. You run over to the furnace with the blowing pipe in the inventory. As you can clearly see, we tied up in inventory quite a significant amount to do this um, so we can buy 10 and 10 uh, 23 slots you then make all of your components into molten glass and then on the walk back you make your highest tier glass item which for me currently is a vial that started off as the oil lamp or something this is an incredibly cheap and fast method, so I've only spent about 2,000 to get about 10 levels, uh, which is not too bad. And there we go, that's the 36 that we needed. Um, I didn't think I'd get in that clip, so that's grand. Um, but if you sell vials back, they sell for nothing. But if you sell anything else back, it sells for like one or two. So you're technically only spending about eight per per level, so it's not even too, uh, per XP. So it's not even that bad as a training method. Cool, so we've now got all the requirements for uh, enlightened journey, which is great news. I spent a bit of time feeding master farmers to see if I can get some really good herb seeds because we need 30 herb lore for um, using the antique lamp. Um, so just to guarantee that these go through and actually make herbs uh, rather than dying on the way, we're gonna do bone voyage now so I can get some volcanic ash. Then once we've done bone voyage, we've got access to fossil island and then we can do Enlightened Journey. Essentially the reason we're completing Enlightened Journey is because when we complete Winter Todd, we can minigame teleport to um, Castle Wars, take the hot air balloon all the way to Varrock, 
which is over here. And then um, chop down trees here and then walk to the dig site. That's usually the way that skill at Ultimate, uh, Ultimate Iron Man gets to Fossil Island. Really good for Ultimate Iron Man as well. So yeah, Bon Voyage, then Enlightened Journey. I've been finding a lot of glitches recently, but this is my favourite one. I've just come to hold of niche to get some vodka. <laughs> Still thinks I'm on the magic car. I'm flying above the buildings. <laughs> What's going on? Whee! What happens if I interact with somebody? Oh, what is this like in HD? Here you go. This is this is my new thing. Finding bugs and look and see what they look like in HD. Oh yeah. I am your god. <laughs> Actually horrifying. Where's the guy? <laughs> just just if you're curious, this is what it looks like with the roofs on. <laughs> And that is Bone Voyage done. That is the one of two final quests for this episode. So really, really important access to Fossil Island, um, which is crucial for us. This is so we can get access to Hunter uh, by doing birdhouse runs and eventually the herbivore and also get access to the underwater section where we can get um, giant seaweed for crafting. And also we can get access to the volcanic mine mini game great for smithing mining XP and also uh, volcanic ash uh, to make ultra compass for, um, compost for farming XP. So huge, huge game here. We've now unlocked most of the mycelium transport system on the island. Uh, can't do this one yet because uh, it'll kill me if I try. Right, so we've got 250 volcanic ash. I think that's probably enough. What we're going to do is go around and make all of our super compost into ultra compost and then we're going to do some farming with these seeds to try and get our herb for rock. And then once those are going, we'll uh, do a nice and journey. Just going around, we actually don't need the iron dagger anymore, and um, we've got to get rid of it for Entrana anyway, so I'm going to sell it here, and if we need it, we can kind of try and get it back. Really annoyingly, I have to drop the Encamdo hammer, because it counts as a weapon to these stupid monks, um, so I'm going to have to try and get this back at some point. Very annoying. Right, we've got to the point in the quest where he gives me a sapling and we have to plant it. Now we have to wait something like eight hours for it to grow so that we can get the uh, branches. Uh, this is going to take a while, but in the meantime, I'll do some uh, woodcutting and fletching and some farm runs. The worst part about early game fletching is you have to fletch normal logs and they give basically zero XP. But with this last normal log, we should get 15 fletching which means that now we can fletch oak logs and it'll be a lot more AFK and reasonable for me. So we're going to do that in between waiting for things to cool down. Right, so whilst we're waiting for things to um, grow, we've been doing some fletching um, and we got a casket from a beginner clue. So let's go open this now. Right, so the tree is finally ready for an enlightened journey. So let's check the health and see if we can get some farming level. Nice. Oh, brilliant. So this now means we can actually use the Tithe Farm uh, Teleport, which would be really good for Winter Todd, honestly. Um, great. So we don't want to chop this down. We want to actually get some branches for it, which I don't know if I can do now or I have to do in like half an hour and an hour. So let me get the branches. Whilst waiting for the second round of branches to come through, I've been doing Sorceress's Garden to pick up some more basic herbs so that I can get my herbal rock. Uh, it's not a bad way and it gets some good farming levels. So um, uh, yeah, we've got a pretty decent amount of um, Herolanders and Guams, which is the kind of thing we're aiming for, honestly. Because these secondaries are really easy to pick up. We have finally got all the willow branches we need for Enlightened Journey. Uh, 12 of them, uh, so that did take a while. It took like 8 hours. Um, but, really great. We're going to go make the rest of the things now and finish the quest. And that is the Enlightened Journey done, which gives me a bunch of XP, but the most important thing is access to the balloon transport uh, stuff. <laughs> so, ooh, cool outfit too. Um, loads of levels, nice. These are the quests we have completed, so we've started Recipe for Disaster, but we've completed a bunch of really important quests for us. Look at that, great. Um, We've also gotten some really good levels, so our highest being, I think, our mining, because we went quite dry on that um, granite uh, artifact grind. But we're going to be getting up some rather um, skills too. The main reason we're doing Winter Top, by the way, is not to get up our fire making, um, or even for the resources, 
it's a really good way to get really good construction XP um, for pretty cheap uh, because you don't have to spend anything you just have to play the game um, same thing for Temporos so we'll be getting up our construction XP and hopefully getting to 42 which is the lowest level for a magic wardrobe so that we can store some of our mage sets and then we can go up to uh, 44 which will be able to store two of our costumes so that would be the ham robes um, but it does mean that we can store stuff like um, the rogues outfit or the graceful suit which I've yet to get because of this um, and then up to the cape rack so if we have any capes that we can store which we won't have for a while the armor case which would be really good for stuff like void and the treasure chest for stuff like um, clues so 42 is our aim um, but obviously we're going to try and get as high as possible so let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or uh, questions and just to let you know I'll be starting the next episode with something that I don't think anybody would expect so it's it's not going straight to uh, Winter Todd it is going to be something that I bet nobody will be able to guess in the comments but leave a comment down below and if you see if you can try and guess it but thank you so much for watching really appreciate it and I'll see you next time